Good morning on this lovely Tuesday. It's the Arty Mummy and I'm here with a um, little tutorial for you. I hope you enjoy this one. It's um, the remake of the first one that I did that um, you all enjoyed. So uh, hopefully this one comes out better. So the first thing we're going to do is just damp our brush a little bit. Gonna take our largest circle and pop some white paint just all the way around the edge. Just go back and forth like that. Try to avoid getting any sort of really chunky bits but you want to be quick so it doesn't dry and make sure you don't miss any bits preferably because it'll just make it easier to to follow the guide that we're going to create with this if it does all the way around okay so we've got that done and pick a spot and on she goes and there we go and do it again just white paint all the way around and pop her on, press it down, make sure that you get some pressure on all the way and one more time I like odd numbers have it overlap. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to get our little, um, hang on, that's a number five round brush. Gonna get a little bit of white paint on this guy, and not too much. Just carefully tidy up the edges of the circle so they're not all chunky. paint's not going on easily, I need to get some more on your brush. Just going to follow that circle around. just pick a side and just give it a little bit more like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is mix up a nice pale blue pretty much the same thing again, just start getting some colour along the outside edge of your bubble. But this time instead of going all the way around, we're just going to go on a couple of spots. And then come inside of your circle a little bit and follow that same curve 
When you've done that, give him a little rub to soften him out. As always, it's a very hot day where I am. My paint's drying very quickly, so I'm probably needing to add a little bit more water than you will, depending on your climate. See that sort of soft, um, soft colour? That's what we're trying to get to. So you don't want hard lines like this at the moment. Just want it to come in nice and soft, just like with our. Um, transparent bubbles that um, were in my previous tutorial where we just rubbed circles with our fingers this is fairly similar you need to get it so that it's just going to be a bit transparent and nice and soft so I'll grab a little bit of white again and make some pink and same again oh, I'm going to get just a little bit more colour in that That's a much prettier pink. A tiny bit more water. It's just not rubbing for me. There we go, it's much better. So I've just come in a little bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing a bit better. So we're picking up a bit of that pink. And just going along in line, smudging it out. Some of my paint's dried a little bit, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit more. So we ended up with a little bit too much water in there. Plop him on. And just soften it out. Come a little bit in. following the same curve as your bubble there. Now we're going to put a little bit of white in the yellow, otherwise it's just not going to show up very well against this dark background. Because your yellow is very transparent and Your white just will, your titanium white will just help give it a little bit more opacity. It's nice and soft. Now as we come in a little bit, we're just going to make a little bit more sort of gaps through here. Try and keep in that nice curve. As you cross your colours over each other because they're transparent we should end up with some nice greeny 
fits where the blue is and goes sort of orangey where the red is. So we've gone around with our colours mixed mixed with white. Now without mixing with white, just a little bit of water. I'm going to add a little bit of sort of pure pigment on top of these. Just make them a little bit more vibrant. So we've got that sort of that, that white base in there for the colour to bounce off of. And the red over the blues will make lovely purple tones. We're just going to allow those colours to blend and get really nice and vibrant. We don't want to completely cover up our pastel tones that we've made with by adding white. But we're just going to add some more vibrant tones. Now see how that blue is really not showing on that black but it's still there and it just adds another um, subtle dimension to it. some more red so it's getting lovely and vibrant now with the yellow again. So we're just building up as we go. Yellow and the red are mixing to make a beautiful orange. Just remember try to stay away from having too much of hard lines in there. go. Now, nice clean brush and a little bit of water. Put some spots of white on and give them a good press so that they smudge out like that. I'll put a few of them down. If you turn your brush on your palette, you'll get a nice little point like that. And go over a couple of our edges and just make them really bright. Outside my line there. Let's fix that up a little bit. And bring a couple of little strokes. In a little bit.
just following that same curve that we got with that lid and we're almost there now we want our number four flat now I haven't even wet this brush I'm just dipping it straight into wet paint and then taking most of the paint off again so that I've got a very flat straight fine um, line to work with and I hold my brush this way not this way we're going to go very straight line like that and a ruler or a pencil or anything else that you can find it's got a bit of my hair on it I'm going to take that straight across using him for a guide I'm going exactly the same line on the other side. And pull it out. So it sort of disappears off to the edge. And make a perfect cross out of it. Pull it out. And again, across. And pull him out from the centre. And then we're going to do an X on top of that. back with our little pointy brush a little round again without um, diluting the paint at all I'm going to pop a bit of just pure white not watered down or anything straight into the middle of there and then into the centre of each one of those that we softened out earlier brighten up a couple of little points but we don't want to do too much more maybe just a little spot out of these Just sort of keep going with that until you're happy with how shiny it looks. And I'm pretty pleased with that one. Thinking though I might mix up just a little bit of an orange. Just take a little bit of my red, a good bit of yellow. want to brighten up some of this in a couple of spots. Make 
certainly dropped a little bit of water on there. More yellow mixed with white. touch more red. There we go, I think he's done. Okay, so I finished those three off and we've popped down four more circles with the toilet roll and it's actually not much size difference there. So anything will do. Should be nice. So a water bottle lid, and That'll work okay. Maybe one more off up here. Okay. Some more floaty bubbles. So for the smaller ones it's exactly the same principle. We just want to go in and tidy up the circles. Small ones are actually probably a little bit easier because they just don't require quite as much. So you can even just go in with a little bit of white 
and just establish um, where we want to have our highlights. It's a bit too much. Can we see everything? Yep. The larger the bubble, the harder it is to make it look shiny, unless you're doing sort of ones like we um, we did last week. be a bit more of a challenge but you know if you make a little bit of a mistake don't worry about it too much um, as I always say in acrylic there's really nothing that can't be fixed that's okay you can do them one at a time like I just did for the bigger ones or you can go around like I'm doing now and um, sort of do each step on each of the um, bubbles so that you sort of end up finishing them at the same time really can be quite a quick and easy little painting. It's up to you whether you want to go slow and steady and try and get them a bit more perfect or um, sort of plop the paint on what you feel like and have fun with it and, and be a little bit more impressionistic. As long as you're going in that curve, following the shape of the original um, circle that you laid down with your round object, whether it be a bottle lid or a, a jar or a can or a whatever you can find around the house that's got a, a smooth straight round edge, well there's an oxymoron, <laughs> a smooth round edge. It's a perfect circle. Um, so keep going with it. Now the reason I'm doing these in white first, and I didn't do the first ones in white, is just to show you another way of getting these stand out nicely and really catch your eye have the colour really pop so as I've said before your acrylic colours are usually fairly transparent if you're putting them onto a dark background unless you mix white with them or put white under them they're really not going to stand out all that well. So now that I've got that white down and it's dried, I can use pure yellow and 
go around like that. Pick up some pure red. Have that mix with the yellow in some places and make a pretty orange. I can pick up some blue. And that'll sort of disappear a bit. can help to reclaim some gaps and spaces and push some parts back. And especially with the blue, you still want to probably, if you want to have a blue shine on it, you still probably want to mix up some blue and white to go on there if you want to have a pretty blue soapy soapy shine okay now that red's kind of disappeared mix a little bit of pink up dark pink Pretty back in there. Simple as that, just make rainbow colours. And as you might have noticed uh, with this one, I've um, I even mixed up a little bit of green, a little bit of orange, and put directly on there too by putting my um, yellow and blue together and red and yellow together. So just to finish one off for you, go back with the white and do exactly the same as the others. Add a few shine marks, a few spots where the the light's catching it. And draw a straight line through. X. And across. Much easier to do with the flat brush. So you can get that lovely clean straight edge. some undiluted white on your little round brush and do the centers of your light points and how many or few you do is entirely up to you
Okay, there we are. All the bubbles are done. The last thing we're going to do is take an old and ruined toothbrush. Pop them in some water. Now, I suggest you have a little practice before you um, actually do this to your painting. So, I don't know if you can see here, I've got a little, picked up a little bit of white. I had dipped my brush in the water. And I'm just getting some of that nicely scrubbed into my bristles there. And all we're going to do is hold our brush up. I don't know if you can see. And we're going to flick it. over the canvas very gently and create a splattering of stars to make our bubbles floating in space don't know how well you can see those but they are there We'll just add a few slightly bigger ones. Sort of randomly. sparkles and I believe we're done I hope you enjoyed this painting as much as I enjoyed making it um, if you did please like subscribe share and um, join the Facebook page group and show me what you did i would love to see it i would so love to see how yours turned out and what you did with it so just giving you a closer look you can make your colors more vibrant if you wish you can use different colours. Aquas and purples are beautiful. Um, I like to keep things nice and simple with my limited palette and um, I like how that turns out but you can use anything you like. And I look forward to seeing you next week with more bubbles. Bye.